Alright guys, so you've clicked on this video because you want to see how to change one of these single sockets here for a nice, it's upside down, double one. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. First of all, I'll be showing you how to remove the old socket, how to prepare the wall so that you can fit the new back box in, and then how to wire up your new socket. And the best bit is, it's a really easy upgrade. Any of you will be able to do it by the time you've finished watching this video. First things first, before we go touching any of this, we need to turn the power off to the circuit that we're working on. If any of you want to give this job a go, do make sure that you're confident and competent in working on basic electrical circuits. So I'm going to plug my socket tester in, and now we'll go and turn the circuit off. Next up, you need to turn off the circuit for the sockets you're working on. In this case, it's the upstairs sockets. So we need to turn off the fourth breaker in and you can hear the socket tester has now gone off. Now some of you may not have this, but it is good to use a lock off kit to lock the MCB off so that nobody else in the house can come along and turn that back on as you're working. If you don't have one of these, what I would advise that you do is notify anyone else in the house that you're doing electrical work, put the cover back up, and just stick something on there so that people don't come along and turn that back on. So I know a lot of you at home that are doing this might not have a voltage tester or multimeter, but I would advise that if you do have access to the correct equipment, then do check that there's no voltage coming to the socket before you go and start any work on it. So let's move on to getting the job done. First thing we're gonna do is undo the two screws and pull the socket forward from the wall. Grab a flathead screwdriver and just remove both of the screws. Turn them anti-clockwise and your socket will gradually move away from the wall. Just remove the two screws and you'll be able to pull the socket away from the wall enough to expose the cables inside. Well we're going to undo the screws now and release the cables from the faceplate of the socket. To do that we'll use a flathead screwdriver on each terminal and undo the little screw which will in turn release the cables. We can then pull the cables out and leave them to the side. So how are we going to remove this old box? First of all, push the coloured lugs all the way to the back of the box. Next up, grab a flathead screwdriver, pop it in the space between the lug here and the box and just push that lug inward towards the centre of the box until it clicks in place. Do that for both sides. You'll then be able to get your screwdriver behind the box and bring it forward very slightly and pull the box forward from the wall. In this case our cables enter through the top of the box and just remove the box by sliding it over the cables. Now obviously this double socket isn't going to fit in this back box so we need to change the back box. The way we do that depends on what back box and what wall type we have. Now this is just a stud wall, so it's really easy, but you may have a traditional brick wall or block wall, and we may need to knock some more of that brick or block out of the way. I'll show you how to do that next. First of all, let's swap this patras box over. For this next part, you're gonna want a double patras box or dry lining box, just like this one. I'll stick a link to one of these boxes in the description and a couple of other tools that you might find useful for the job. Guys, before we go any further, if the video is helpful, do hit the like button for me because that helps the video help and reach more people just like you on YouTube. And guys, if you like DIY videos, hit subscribe for me because you don't want to miss out on all the handy tips and tricks that I've got to come on the channel. Right, let's fit the new box. How are we going to do that? Well, quite simple, we're going to draw around it, but we do need a little level so that we can make sure we get it nice and level, because otherwise it's going to look rubbish when we put the socket on the wall. Well, we know first of all that our cables enter through the top of the box, so we need to remove the little plastic cutout in the top of the box. If your cables come in elsewhere, you can of course remove one of the other cutouts. And now we'll feed our cables through the top of the box. Now we're going to use part of our existing hole here, so all we need to do is hold that box halfway in that hole, make sure it's nice and level, and then we'll be able to draw around the remainder 
of the box. You can now pull the box out of the way and you can see the extension that we'll make to the hole that's already in the wall. Now plasterboard like this is really soft. So to do this next bit, you can cut it with a multitude of things. The proper tool to use for this would be a jab saw. I'll leave one in the description if you want to grab one. But I like to use a multi-tool just because it's much quicker. All you need to do now is cut along the line that you've drawn. And now you can just pop that piece of plasterboard out, tidy up the edges if there's any rough edges. Now you can see we can go ahead and fit the box into the hole that we've made. And you can now push it all the way back into the hole. Now just check that it's level, which it is, and you can see that the box is now fitted in the hole. So now just spread your electrical cables back out so we can work on them. And you can see the little coloured lugs at the back of our back box. We just need to push those firmly out into the cavity of the wall. That way when we screw the faceplate back to the box it will pull these lugs forward and nip them against the inside of the plasterboard. If you have a metal back box and a solid wall, the methods are a little bit different. First of all, remove the back box. We will then extend the hole in exactly the same way that we did before, so that we can fit the new back box in place. To do that, we'll use a double metal back box this time, and we'll just draw around it. You can now see the hole that we need to extend. We're using a 25mm box, so we want to set our drilling depth at 25mm. Handy little tip, wrap a piece of electrical tape around your drill bit, and that will stop you over penetrating into the block. You can now chain drill around the perimeter of the mark that we made. By chain drilling the brick or block, we'll be able to remove that material a lot easier. Next, we'll use a hammer and chisel to remove the material. Because this is block, I'm gonna use an old wood chisel because it's really soft and easy to go through. If you're cutting out brick, you might need to use a curl chisel. First of all, just cut all the way around the perimeter. We can now use a curl chisel to remove the remainder of the block. Just work your way all the way around the edge, making sure that you don't go too deep. Just remove any loose material and then try the box in the hole. The box should be nice and flush with the surface. You can then use something like a tracer pencil to make the marks for the screws. And then all you need to do is drill two holes. Insert a couple of wall plugs, reinstall the metal box, and then we just need to use two screws to screw it in place. And that is how easy it is to swap a metal back box. But now go ahead and grab your double socket, and we're gonna wire this up now. Now I'll put a wiring colors chart on the screen. This is for UK wiring. Now in modern homes, your colors are likely to be brown for live, blue for neutral, and yellow and green for the CPC or earth, if you're old school like me. So let's go ahead and wire that up now. You're gonna need your flathead screwdriver again for this bit. If your wires are too short, I do have a video on the channel where I teach you how to extend your wires. There'll be a little pop-up at the top of the screen now if you need to go and check that out once you've finished watching this video. Right, let's wire this up. First of all, undo the terminal screws on each terminal. First of all, let's put the two earth wires in. They're the green and yellow ones. We'll put them into the earth terminal and do up the screw. Make sure you do the screw nice and tight and then give them a little tug just to check that they're in properly. Next up, the two brown wires, which are the live ones, will go into the live terminal. Push them in and again, do up the screw. 
give them a little tug just to check that they're located properly and now we'll move on to the two blue wires they're the neutral wires and we'll put them into our neutral terminal and again just do up the screw nice and tight and give them a tug just to check that they're located in the terminal properly. Now the only difference to doing this with a metal back box is we'll need to earth the back box with a link wire. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Don't forget we need to earth this box because it's metal. To do that we'll use a link wire and we'll place that in the earth terminal. Do up the little terminal screw and then we'll need to link that earth wire into the earth terminal on our socket. Now push the wires into the box so that they're all nicely in there and that way they'll give you the least resistance when you push the socket back into the box. If this sort of thing helps you out, go and check out the Patreon. On there, there's a Discord group and every weekend loads of people are putting messages on there where they're asking lots of different questions and we'll all help each other. So if you've got a project going on, you'll find the answer over there. The link for that is below in the description. Now grab hold of the two supplied screws that you'll have got with your socket. What we now need to do is push the socket back and use those screws to fix it in place. So push the socket roughly back in its place and then just allow it to spring forward very slightly. You can now use the screw and insert that through the hole and then look down into the box and you will see that you can locate that screw into those coloured lugs that are on the side of the box. You can now feel that that's located. Do that with both of your screws. Don't do up either of the screws just yet. We just want to locate them for now in those coloured lugs, which they are. You can see that they've both now nipped on to the coloured lugs in the box. You can now start to gradually do up the screws. So you can see I'm kind of just doing them very roughly for now. I'm not tightening them up at all just yet. So now place your level on the top of the socket and you can get that socket nice and level and then do up those screws all the way. And just finally tighten up the two screws. Now we're gonna go remove the lock off kit and turn the circuit back on and check if our socket works properly. So let's remove the lock off kit. Now let's use a socket tester, links in the description if you wanna get one and we'll give the socket a test. And you can see there we've got two green lights. That means there's no faults on the socket and you just successfully swapped out a single socket for a double one. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been helpful. If it has, you're probably going to like one of these ones as well. So go and click on one of those and give those a watch too. And I'll see you guys in the next one.